going to get us where we need to go. We also need to have some processes in place for how we're going to use that automation. So there was a pretty big effort in developing some standard consistent processes. We had nine different uh, operating areas and all nine areas had a pretty independent process for how they handled things. So we wanted to drive some consistency home in how we monitor production, how we repaired our wells, and, and this truly is probably still, and still will be in the future, one of our biggest uh, vehicles for, for optimizing wells. And then we wanted to uh, standardize how we've tracked our failures, do it, do it in an easy, consistent means, and Judy's not here yet, but Judy's going to do a, do a presentation on our failure tracking later today, so I won't get into that quite as much today. And then, of course, uh, got to learn from, from what we did. Uh, if we don't track our history, if we don't document our history, we're, we're destined to repeat it. And if that's a bad history, we might not be accomplishing what we want to accomplish. So here's, here's a busy process screen that we, we came up with. And, and really, the only thing that I want to, want to take a, you guys to take away from this diagram is the four steps that we have in our process, which is, of course, number one thing is to monitor. And if we see a significant variance in production, then the next step is to diagnose. And we'd like to do that diagnosis remotely, if possible, save that driving time and, and so forth. Then once, once we've diagnosed a problem, then, of course, the next step is to resolve it. And there's going to basically be two different places that we're going to resolve that. It's either going to be in a downhole repair or optimization, if you want to give it its best possible light, and, or it's going to be something that we can do on the surface and, and possibly remotely, uh, especially with, uh, we'll talk about the remote capabilities of being able to uh, adjust controllers from the desk versus uh, driving out there to make that adjustment. And finally, like I said, we, we want to document and evaluate. And uh, this slide is actually from one of our uh, consultants' uh, slide packages. But uh, really, you know, we've got to document it before we can truly evaluate it. On a one-on-one -on -one basis, we can evaluate things. But if we really want to evaluate the whole picture, we've got to have it documented in a form that we can draw comparisons to not only sing single individual wells, but uh, groups of wells. So, monitoring is the first step that in our little process there. And what we've chosen uh, at ConocoPhillips to use to, to monitor our beam pump systems is XBOC. Uh, there were several reasons we uh, chose XBOC. We, one of the negatives and one of the positives of uh, being bought out by other companies is that you get the benefit of seeing everything everybody else had and what you had or didn't have. And that was the case for me uh, in 2002, I guess it was, when Conoco got bought by Phillips. We got to go over to the Phillips office and see some automation that we didn't have. We didn't have XBOC at, at Conoco. We didn't have some of the other commercially available automation systems. We had our own in-house developed uh, software applications and uh, the problems that go along with in-house developed software, uh, one of which is uh, support. Uh, something commercially available is typically has a little more support involved, or at least the availability of it. Support for this also is uh, economical for us. So, so the first thing we do here is we see a tabular view. Uh, operators get a report of what needs to happen in their area when they get to work, so they don't have to guess. It's not a search and destroy mission from day to day. They have a little uh, assistance in that search. Uh, different views, you know, we can uh, group our problems by exceptions. You know, what, what, uh, what group of wells have worn pumps today? What uh, group of wells have overloaded equipment and so forth? And, and, and even, you know, John, one of the things that John Patterson likes to look for is the uh, ratio between minimum polish rod load and peak polish rod load. We can measure that, and as it gets to the point, the magic point two, that he, he likes us not to get below, we can be stick it in a folder that says, here's the wells that 
that that is the case and you guys need to be looking at it.